Welcome to Nadal and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited. I'm Nicola Barato. Let's take a look at the headlines. Finance Minister reveals new proposals to develop the recreation area at Cora. Minister of Energy and Energy Affairs signs three production sharing contracts. CARICOM Secretary General says efforts will be made towards utilizing the social media in order to improve communication with the general public. And in sport, boxers and sailors heading to London 2012. Thank you for joining us to our top story. Finance Minister and Tunapuna MP, the Honorable Winston Dukaran, is revealing new proposals being put forward by government to develop the recreation area at Cora. Minister Dukaran was speaking at the commissioning of the Cora Activity Center where members of the National Self-Help Commission, as well as Community Development Minister, the Honorable Nizam Bash, were also present. Verna Bath has the story. The Minister of Environment almost following what the Minister of Community Development has already begun to do, brought to Cabinet a note to allocate additional funds for the development of the recreational facilities in Cora. And I hope that during the course of this year, we'll begin to see that. Already they have started with the lighting of the, of the area. The lighting had two things, and these are lights down pool one and pool two, etc. Since they put on the lights, the people do not leave until the next morning now. The Tunapuna MP and Finance Minister, the Honorable Winston Dukaran, embracing plans being put forward to develop and possibly expand the recreation facilities at Cora. The very relaxing spot, known to have some of the best curry duck limes in Trinidad, he says, will be made more secure and safe for visitors, especially those who may want to camp out for the night. He adds that many persons from various parts of the country visit Cora in search of relaxation, as it is seen to many as the ideal getaway. Minister Dukaran adds that the area has great potential, not just in tourism, but in agriculture as well. The Cora village and community has great potential in the field of ecotourism. It has great potential in the field of agriculture. It has great potential in the field of recreation and at one time it had great potential as a source of water for Trinidad and Tobago. We have not yet scratched the surface of the potential of the Cora area and I hope that this activity center will now mobilize us together to work step by step to unleash the real energy of Cora as a community and as a village in our country. Minister Dukaran was speaking at the commissioning of the Cora Activity Center where members of the National Self-Help Commission as well as Community Development Minister Nizam Bakch were also present. He says the center is the first of its kind in this country as it represents a new approach to governance with a more direct outreach to communities. This is the first activity center and I think there is a significance to the change of name. For community development in the past has been the name that we used to bring the community together. But we ended up with a lot of communities and no development. And therefore, the change of the name to the Community Activity Center is to focus now on a new level of governance in the country. For in the final analysis, development in any country is dependent on the governance of the people. And the Cora Activity Center is really turning a new leaf for Trinidad and Tobago in giving us an opportunity to change the very governance of community development in Trinidad and Tobago. The facility is expected to hold council meetings which were interrupted in the past due to the lack of proper accommodation. 
Minister Dukaran says villagers are extremely overjoyed to have their very own facility. For many years, I know that they have been searching for a center to do this kind of activities. And I myself have been invited by Mr. Ali and his team to some of the places where we had meeting. It was always under somebody's home or in some open space. And that has been going on for two years since I have been here. Now, I feel sure, Mr. Ali, that you will be proud as the chairman and president of the village council to invite us to your now new headquarters and the new facilities which you have. And we want to look forward to working with you to making this a real activity center. Vina Barath, News 4. News 4 will be back after the break. Hello, ever thought of cutting your TSTT business landline costs? It's simply a smart choice to make, only from Blink. One fixed monthly rate for bundled local minutes, bundled mobile minutes, bundled international minutes, and many free calling features, all wrapped up to save you a bundle. Smart choice, only from Blink. A bundle of joy. Welcome back. Minister of Energy and Energy Affairs, Senator Kevin Ramnarain, has signed three production sharing contracts on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago with British Petroleum and British Gas. The contracts were signed with BP Exploration Operating Company for blocks TTDAA 14 and 23A and with BG International PLC BG for block 5D at the Carlton Savannah Hotel in Cascade. Kimberly Ram Kalawan has more. Three production sharing contracts between this country and oil and gas experts BG International as well as BP Trinidad and Tobago have been signed. Energy Minister Senator the Honorable Kevin Ramnarine gave the official go-ahead for partners BP Exploration Operating Company to commence drilling together with BG International. Speaking at the ceremony to mark the occasion, Minister Ramnarine said the decision was as a result of last July's Deepwater Energy bid round. It is no secret that we at the Ministry of Energy have now launched another Deepwater bid round. This opened on the 5th of April 2012 and was formally launched three weeks ago. Interest in this bid round has been keen and already companies have made payments for data packages. Other companies have visited our data room and there are, visits, there are other visits that are planned. We'll also be having later this year a land-based bid round, and that is expected to happen before the end of the year. President of BGTT Derek Hudson noted that this exploration phase is expected to last six years, and this was the company's first wholly owned local acreage. The exploration phase is for a six-year period comprising a seismic acquisition phase of two and a half years, with an optional second phase of three and a half years in which there's a one well exploration commitment. BG's commitment to exploration in Trinidad and Tobago over the next few years is reflected by the fact that in our 23 year existence in this country, this is our first acreage holding with 100% ownership. In addition, it is our first acreage acquisition since we farmed into the adjacent Block 5C in August 2007. The minister added that such explorations will unlock over nine wells for oil and gas production. This year is a particularly busy one for BP as it is expected to drill a total of nine developmental wells from its uh, tender assist drilling rig and from its Ruan Jacob rig, um, which is currently, I think both rigs are currently deployed. These production sharing contracts will trigger the commencement of new exploration activities in our deep water, as mentioned by Mr. Lashley. BP Exploration Company Limited is committed to an investment program of the U.S. $176 million for the two blocks over a five-year period and a, further, and a further $224 million U.S. over the optional fees. The signing is said to come in alignment with the government's decisions and recommendations, which emanated as a result of the Petroleum Regulations Competitive Bidding Orders of 2010. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. 
CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Owen LaRock says he will be making efforts towards utilizing the social media to the fullest in order to improve communication with the general public. He was speaking at a roundtable discussion with members of the media. CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRock is assuring that technology will be utilized to better communicate affairs of CARICOM to the public. Speaking at a roundtable discussion with members of the media, Ambassador Erwin LaRock says he sees the social media playing an integral role in transmitting information on the affairs of CARICOM. I had hoped to have been on the social media. I was, I'm going to be so bold as to um, actually allocate some time to go online and, and interact online on these blogs and um, until, I, until I'm chased away by something, um, looking at some of those, you know. I want to be able to use, being able to use the social media to its fullest, all right. Um, I'm very much aware that contacts like this and will have to continue, but it's so limited in what you can achieve that it is, it is slow moving, I'm aware of it. And um, so, so that is going to be that is going to be that's the biggest challenge that I have now. Is to, as you say, how am I going to get the word out there? How am I going to use the, the technology to get the word out there? We're doing a couple of things already. That one is uh, preparing. We have prepared a draft, and hopefully soon to be considered draft communication strategy that will include the various uh, media for for how we how we communicate. And secondly. Um, I mean, uh, also looking at how I can improve upon the, the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure, to allow us to communicate better. Um, I will, I will even go so far as to tell you that that our our internal, even our internal communication is hampered by by what by what we what we have. Uh, so it's a very serious problem that I'm seeking to address. And um, when I had the price tag, I was going to take to, to, to improve it. It frightens me, but I have to do it because it's going to make our work more efficient. Ambassador Irwin LaRock says he has plans for CARICOM's information to be accessible on YouTube and other social mediums. The CARICOM Secretary General is, however, admitting that there are several challenges which may have hindered these initiatives from being introduced earlier. I said a time frame which has elapsed for having been to, to be on the... On the on the social media, I'm being advised um, that I need I need to put other things in place to be able to sustain it. That once you go on, you can't go on and switch off. Mm -hmm. That you have to dedicate um, resources. resources to it, and then you have to look at. And also YouTube, I was talking about how we could use YouTube a little more to to get some of our stuff out that you could probably use in your clips and whatnot. And then I was told um, that we have a challenge. We may have a challenge in the secretariat with regards to our IT infrastructure. Ambassador Irwin LaRock says he has big plans for CARICOM and its renewal. He says one of his goals is to make CARICOM more relevant to the public. Looking at, um, I'm again using the words, but, but a sense of renewal, a sense of restructuring, a sense of reform of not just the institution but of the community. Um, trying to make it bring it back into the lives of people, make it more relevant. And I was saying this afternoon to some people after the session I had with the, the private sector that um, when a similar question was asked uh, privately, I said, you know, it, would have been, it was easier in the 60s and 70s to promote regional integration because the, the, the people of the region were coming of their own in a sense of being nationalistic and to some extent having that national regional, regional nationalism. But the youth of today, the time has elapsed, and, and they have lost that. So my, my immediate and the short term is to look at precisely the issue of, of, of making us, uh, once again, more relevant to, to, to being more um, communicative, bringing the word out there, while, of course, advancing the work in some very key areas. Vina Barath, News 4. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Personal music players can stop you from being aware of your surroundings. Always be aware of your surroundings and periodically look over your shoulder to prevent anyone from sneaking up on you. Remember, crime prevention is everyone's business. A message from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service.
thank you for staying with us. The John S. Donaldson Technical Institute will now be known as the University of Trinidad and Tobago John S. Donaldson Port of Spain Creativity Campus. The school will focus on creative arts and music. According to Tertiary Education Minister, the Honorable Fazal Karim, in presenting his speech at the rebranding, he said it's all part of his ministry's ushering of a new era of studies that would propel the diversification of the economy. Kimberly Ramkalawan has more. The John S. Donaldson Technical Institute has been rebranded as the University of Trinidad and Tobago, John S. Donaldson Port of Spain Creativity Campus. The rebranding exercise comes some 50 years after the institute was first opened, which also coincides with Jubilee celebrations being held in the lead up to independence. Tertiary Education Minister the Honorable Fazal Karam said the government's aim was to ensure that adequate spaces were provided for persons looking to study the various cultures which are unique to Trinidad and Tobago. This display of excellence is by no means accidental. What is occurring here is actually a product of the deliberate positioning of our resources to produce quality relevant to the needs of our city and our country. The various talents resident at UTT at both the institutional and individual levels have been fused together to support a deliberate strategic intent. Further, with the support of my ministry, in terms of the structures that we have placed, we will ensure that there is an alignment of UTT's even articulated vision, strategy and purpose with that of the National Development Plans. In honoring John S. Donaldson, the man responsible for the formation of the Institute 50 years ago, Minister Karam said it was his government's way of keeping the spirit of our founding fathers alive in the generations to come. Today, therefore, is in a sense for me to join with you in the rededication of the spirit of the early pioneers for us to pursue their dreams within the context of a new framework for the next 50 years in the lives of Trinidad and Tobago. It is expected that the Creativity Campus will play a pivotal part in the relations recently formed with India in providing musical training for persons interested in learning how to play the steel pan. The Government of India and the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Science, Technology and Tertiary Education, we have agreed to facilitate plans for student exchange with respect to people and students and faculty in music between both India and Trinidad and Tobago with particular reference to the pan music. Under the Creativity Campus, students will have the chance to become versed in graphic and creative arts, as well as music. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Sports fans in Trinidad and Tobago expect athletes in disciplines such as track and field and swimming to qualify for the Olympic Games. Therefore, it must be an added bonus when we see boxers and sailors heading to London 2012. According to the Honorable Anil Roberts, Minister of Sport, more success can be expected as developmental programs unfold. Wayne Cunningham tells us more. First, it was sailor Andrew Lewis who qualified in Germany to compete in the laser class at the London 2012 Olympics. Then Carlos Suarez went to Brazil and became only the second boxer from Trinidad and Tobago to qualify for an Olympiad. The Honorable Anil Roberts, Minister of Sport, says it's a simple formula to sustain this sporting growth. Some very rare uh, occurrences are taking place, which means that overall, that sport is on the way up, that we are doing the right thing and we'll continue to do that because the principle is very simple. Develop sport in the communities where people live. Uh, uh, make opportunities available for any child who would like to take part in any sport. Let there be opportunity. And there, then from get in, increasing that critical mass of children who are in active positive, healthy lifestyle. We've identified talent and move forward. Sourcing the right personnel, even though unpopular, can be an asset. People who are great coaches tend to be mavericks. They don't, they don't conform to the societal norms. Case in point, box of pots. 
you hate him, you love him, you don't like him, you find he talk too much, he like the media, he's dressed bad, he want to argue, he, all of that, good. I know that very long, but I've seen his understanding, his passion and his knowledge of the sport, so I gave him an opportunity. I told him, you talk a lot over the years and you've never been given the opportunity. So I give you the opportunity now to produce. And immediately he has. And this is just the beginning because it only gets better because the sporting academies, the boxing gyms are now getting going. They have in Arima, in Dabadi, Omira, by my constituency, Shaguanas East, Shaguanas West, Separia. We have San Juan coming across this country. Then we're going to go into schools. So as time goes by, we're going to get more and more talent. It has been 48 years since we had sailors at the Olympics, and the achievement of 22-year-old Andrew Lewis also came in for high praise. In sailing, we saw Mr. Lewis, not since 1964, with the Barrow brothers in the Dutchman class, did we see a sailor qualifying for the Olympics. Incredible. I mean, he tried hard, and his, you could see him in tears, and he understood the support that he got. We will support any and everybody. I'm also appreciative of the national sporting organizations, the NGBs now. You notice how everybody get quiet. There's no more fighting. Because the minister don't want to fight. I'm not here to fight. Follow the process. It's taxpayers' money. Let's spend it properly. It is the people's money, it's not my money. It is for you, but it's not for you to steal. It's for you to get it down to where it belongs. We are getting um, news for sports. When we come back, celebrating 50 years of independence. Stay with us. The Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago has joined with the rest of the nation in celebrating 50 years of independence. And in doing so, the bank has put together a display spanning key artifacts and visuals telling the story of what led to the historic day for our nation. As Central Bank Governor Ewart Williams commissioned the display, he called on citizens to take the opportunity to learn more on what went into the preparation for the changing of flags which represent the attainment of independence. Kimberly Ram Kalawan has more. As Trinidad and Tobago looks back at 50 years since independence, there's a bit of nostalgia associated for those who witnessed that key moment when the Union Jack was lowered and the colors of red, white and black were hoisted at midnight of August 31st, 1962. In remembering those moments and the ones that led up to that fateful August Friday, the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago will host an exhibition titled The Journey to Independence. Speaking at the opening of the exhibit located at the Twin Towers, Central Bank Governor Ewart Williams noted that it was this history that helped form our nation and also aided in keeping us together in the times of trouble. We hope that this exhibition prompts our nation to reflect on, our, on the road to independence and on the many persons and events that marked that road. We hope that the recreation of the journey will remind our society of the many things that unite us, the many things that keep us together as a nation. We hope that this story will help us recommit to some of the principles our nation embraced at independence. Things like multi-party democracy, religious tolerance, and respect for human rights. And above all, we hope that this exhibition will remind our youth of the challenge that was laid down for them at independence. He added that it was critical for the display to also pay homage to great pioneers of this country's democracy. We owe these delegates, all 17 of them, 
an enormous debt of gratitude for guiding the ship of state to the safe harbor of independence. From all reports, the negotiations were difficult and they were certainly not always harmonious. Indeed, the issues were contentious, having to do with the protection of minority rights, impartiality in civil service appointments, and guarantees for the conduct of free and fair elections. The governor expressed hope in the exhibit not only generating a sense of patriotism, but new perspectives and a deeper appreciation of our independence among citizens. With a passing reference to an article I saw in the newspapers two days ago, in which the author lamented that the 50th anniversary of anniversary celebrations may not stir the patriotism and the positive feelings from our citizens who know little about the momentous events leading up to independence. Well, we at the bank really hope that our exhibition, Trinidad and Tobago Journey to Independence, helps fill that void so as to rekindle that enthusiasm and patriotism. Members of the public are invited to visit the exhibit located on the ground floor of the bank. Viewings are scheduled Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and will run until June 22nd. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.